this is the most over the top gaming monitor I have ever used. And yes, you heard that correctly gaming monitor. Not a TV, this is a fully engineered gaming display aimed at both PC gamers and console users alike that really do want to go big. But can you go too big? I mean, 48 inches is pretty insane. So is this the best thing since sliced bread or is it something you should be firmly leaving on the shelf? Find out after a short word from this video's sponsor. The Gigabyte S55U brings large format bliss to PC gaming. Packing a 55 inch 4K quantum dot display, the S55U is perfect for playing games up to a silky smooth 120 hertz. You get variable refresh rate modes, eARC and auto low latency mode, as well as HDMI 2.1, what is not to love. Learn more today with the link down below. Let us begin. What on earth has LG actually released? Well, in a nutshell, a tweaked version of one of their OLED TV panels that's not only slightly higher specs, but also comes with a completely different menu system and stand. Compared to my C10 OLED TV, the panel is noticeably less glossy, which is going to be controversial to some, as you can argue the image quality is better on a glossy panel, but I would argue that this is probably more appropriate for your typical well-lit bedroom slash office. There really is no getting around the fact that this thing is absolutely ginormous, and I'm surprised it does actually fit on my desk as well as it does. In fact, every time I walk in this room, and I've been using this display for around about a month now, I'm still genuinely surprised when I walk in just how big it is. I think the kindest words that I can say about this is that it is absolutely perfect for specific users with specific use cases. Because if you can take full advantage of its unique selling point, which is of course its size, then you are going to absolutely adore it. For everybody else though, myself included, I think you might not. I mean, don't get me wrong, on a technical level, this monitor is very hard to fault. It uses an OLED 4K panel to deliver visuals that at times can be jaw-droppingly good. The resolution doesn't look as crisp as it would at 32 inches, but having all of that extra screen real estate that you can actually use is incredibly useful for working on multiple things at the same time, maybe spreadsheets, Word documents, productivity on this thing is just fantastic. And because it's an OLED panel, you get the super inky blacks and contrast, high levels of color accuracy, and an overall image that stuns every time you fire up some content, especially in HDR. Being OLED does bring a couple of unique issues, however, and the most noticeable is this thing with automatic brightness control. So if you have a white window, like you typically would in the desktop, and then you make it big, so maybe a web browser, the whole screen starts to dim slightly, which is quite annoying because you notice it straight away. But then almost long term, it's more annoying because if you're writing something, this is very gradual dimming till it gets very dim and you've got to move the window around to sort of jog it into full brightness again. There doesn't seem to be a way to properly turn it off, which is quite annoying. I think one of the Asus alternatives does have that setting, so bear that in mind. But then also because this is OLED, you might run into potential image retention issues in the future. Personally, it wouldn't put me off too much. There are a few different OLED settings you can change in this. In fact, I can show you these settings now with the quirky new remote. If you enter it down, you can go to OLED Care, and here you have Screen Move, Screen Saver, Image Cleaning, and Pixel Cleaning. But basically my TLDR is that there's extra risk with this, and the main advice is just not to leave static images on this for a long period of time, because you might get burn in, which wouldn't be good. All of these OLED conundrums shouldn't really affect your gaming though, as moving images are refreshing much, much quicker. And yes, that is absolutely my segue into the main advantage of this monitor versus its TV rivals, its overclocked refresh rate, because unlike LG TVs, this display actually goes up to 138Hz for a slightly faster image when you're gaming. Is it going to make a huge difference? Probably not, but it is definitely very nice to have. And honestly, this is such a great monitor to game on, no questions asked. Again, from a technical level, it excels. OLED just has such low levels of motion blur that moving images look far crisper than most traditional monitors, regardless of what it is you actually want to play. Input lag is as minimal as you could ask for too. There's nothing perceivable, so you don't need to worry about it affecting your aim or scrolling. And on top of all of this, you get FreeSync and G-Sync compatibility for a reduced stutter and tearing in your games, not only over DisplayPort, but also over HDMI 2.1, which is brilliant if you do want to use this 4K 120 with a games console. But here is the thing. For me, I just can't sit here and use this monitor comfortably. I really have tried. I've just looked. I've used this for around about 42 hours. And every single time I stand up and I start walking downstairs, I'm like rubbing my eyes. Just like, they, they hurt a bit. It is genuinely an uncomfortable monitor to use when you're this close to it. 
which isn't necessarily a fault of the screen itself, but if you are looking to buy it and actually put it on a desk like this, I really do want you to be aware that I do not find this comfortable to use in this exact scenario. It really is all about the distance that you sit away from it. I've tried working, casual titles like Age of Empires, and even hardcore games like Apex Legends, and I just always finish up rubbing my eyes. Yet, on the much larger 65-inch OLED TV downstairs, no such issue. If I replace this with the Alienware 38-inch ultra-wide monitor, it's also not a problem. It's all about the size at this distance. So let's get real, and let's get the advice stick out for a second. We're going to have to use this, just pretend it says advice down the side of it. Carl, can you add that in post somehow? This monitor is perfect for anyone that desires masses of screen real estates, but then also needs a hardcore gaming monitor. Preferably one where you're going to sit a little bit further back. For example, this would be absolutely perfect for when I was at uni. One screen that you're going to use for everything, be it TV, movies, gaming, work, the lots. But you really don't want to compromise on the dream of hardcore PC gaming performance. If you're going to play a title with a tiny user interface, or maybe you're going to set up a flight sim, racing den, have multiple screens, anything that's all about immersion really, then this really would be pretty epic. But absolutely on the contrary, if you're going to sit at a desk and play first person games with this, I would absolutely not recommend it because it is nausea inducing, it is an absolute no-no for me. I'm sure there's someone in the comments that loves that, but nah man. Absolutely not. So okay, let's say you are well suited to this monitor. Well, this raises another question. Why buy this over the usual LG TVs? Well, I would argue it's normally down to input lag, but then again, the LG OLED PC modes tend to be so low anyway that it wouldn't really make masses of difference in this regard. Instead, it would probably be for the PC-centric features. A Like a stand that doesn't take up too much room on your desk, has a headphone jack baked in, and has loads of RGB lighting around the back. I mean, maybe not that last one. Perhaps it's for the PC remote that allows for much quicker adjustments on the fly, the DisplayPort connection, or maybe the user interface that is just more geared towards desktop use. But then again, you're also losing features because this isn't a TV. Do you want a TV tuner? Do you want to quickly be able to bring up something like Netflix and watch some content? Do you want Dolby Vision? Because that's not actually supported on this either, which I find very strange. Even if none of this bothers you, the most noticeable thing has to be the price. Because the LG TVs that are competing with this are currently around about £300 less at the time of filming, and I would argue are probably a better fit and are more rounded for a loss of potential buyers. The LG C2, for example, still has FreeSync and G-Sync compatibility and very similar gaming performance. Plus, it comes in a 42-inch size that I think is a lot more suited to desks, even though that is still very big in itself. And so, unfortunately, for all of these reasons, I have to admit I do struggle to recommend this, definitely at its current price point. If it comes down, then it definitely does have some unique features that some people are going to love. But then again, if you want those features and the LG TV is cheaper, personally, I would just buy that. That, especially the 42 inch, that's probably what I would go for if I was going big format. But obviously everyone's needs are different. If I was buying a gaming monitor at this price and I wasn't too fussed about it being this big, then I think the QD OLED from Alienware or Samsung is what I would go for, that's what I'm using at the moment and seriously I absolutely love it. But then again, as I seem to be saying a lot at the moment, these are expensive products, they are not required to have a great PC gaming experience. A 1440p, 165Hz display is going to be available for less than half the cost of this, and if you just want to play games with your friends on a screen that looks and feels fantastic, then that is going to give you much better bang for the buck. But you probably knew that going in. Maybe you just want OLED. Let me know your thoughts on this monitor down in the comment section below. What do you think? Are you glad LG have gone for this sort of design? Bringing monitors to TVs or TVs to monitors? Or do you agree with me and you think this is fantastic from a technical point of view, but it's not something you would actively pick up? I'd love to hear from you. Either way, do smash that like button and get yourself subscribed. It really does help out. And as always, if you do want to check out current pricing on this monitor, anything in my setup, you can find that with my Amazon affiliate links that are listed down below. And while you're down there, why not check out the Gigabyte S55U. This gaming display is perfect for PCs and next-gen consoles, and it even comes rocking Android OS for entertainment bliss. It supports 96% of the DCI-P3 color space, HDR10+, with full array local dimming, has a Chromecast built right in, and rocks apps like Netflix, Prime, and YouTube. Get yours today with a link down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one.